fossil shells from the Oregon coast, a variety of kinds, millions of years old. They hold secrets inside. How do we get into that rock to get to the fossil? Join me as we reveal the shell from the stone start to finish. First, let's go over the tools that you'll need really quick. I'm using a rotary tool. Dremel, Fordham, Chicago, whatever kind will do. You'll need some diamond burrs, coated or centered. Different shapes and sizes help to get into all the nooks and crannies. That one has rust on it, that's bad. I was asked if you could use the tools that came along with the rotary tool, and the answer is yes. That's how I got started. In the demo, I'm using Nova points, but if you've got the stone grinders, they're a fine stand-in. Go first with orange to green, then to pink. I'll cover more of that as we go along. Sanding drums are the final, like the final Novas. You go coarse to fine, like 100 to 240 to 600. It's good. I made my own out of sandpaper, so if you don't have the right stuff, uh, don't let it stop you. From there, we'll go to the polish pastes. Some come with the tools. Jewelry polish paste will do. I'm using diamond paste, but again, don't be daunted if you don't just have this lying around your house. Wool buffer tips are good. Dowel shaped tips are fine. Even skewers. Then we have safety gear. A respirator or a mask is a must. Safety glasses too. You wanna preserve those uh, wonderful features. And then I think we're good to go. Let's get on with it. This big chunker I found in some winter gravels on the beach. I kept finding these stones that had a little bit of shell showing. They always had a sandstone and darker coarse host rock or matrix. I wondered what the shell might look like if I carefully removed that matrix around it. So fire up the power tools. I'm starting with a large diamond coated burr. I've even worn through the middle of this one. It's definitely seen some action. I'm also using a Dremel flex shaft. This kind of carving is dirty work, as you'll see. Even though I've burned through several of these motors, I find it a great tool and cheaper to replace than my Fordham. I seized up my Fordham handpiece doing just this kind of work, and just to get the handpiece fixed, it costs as much as the whole Dremel tool. So what I'd suggest is to dry the insides of your tool after each session and your burrs and your chucks and your tool should be fine. You can see where we've worn through the sandstone and we're seeing more of that porous other matrix. It turns out that the other material coating the shell are the ancient remains of some buddies that the shell had. Bryozoans are tiny animals, kind of like coral on a reef, that tagged along on the shell. To add to the crusty buildup they made, hermit crabs would also use these shells as homes, and the bryozoans had more time to grow and leave up to nine millimeters of that porous crust. Wild. Okay, switching from the 100 grit diamond burr to this centered 240 grit burr. Centered just means that the diamonds are embedded in the burr instead of being coated on the outside. I'm starting to see the shell through the bryozoan crust, so I want to slow down on the grind. Also, this bullet burr will help me through the curves on the shell. This is when I'd go from a burr to an orange grinder stone if you're going with the Dremel tool kit, unless you have a d diamond burr that has a finer grit. I just know that with my Dremel I just got coarse ones. You want to have a light touch through, th through this stage as you'll be uncovering that shell and it'll be the first daylight it's seen for millions of years. I totally nerd on on that fact. So we've mostly been carving so far, just taking away some of that excess material so that we can get down to our polishing project. Following the curves is part of the gentle touch that I was talking about, and we're trying to carve around the fragile shell, like the potential spines that are there and the tip of the spire. A pointed tool is better for this than the cylindrical kind that I was using before. 
The details are really coming out on this one. The shells can be really worn out inside their rock cocoon or in pristine condition. I failed to mention earlier that you need to work wet. I don't mean that you need to sit in the rain or in the shower. What I do mean is that your project needs to stay wet and so do your burrs and points. The dust is toxic from this project. You want to keep that to a minimum. So setting up a carving station can be high tech or super low tech like my outdoor carve station here. It consists of a stool to use as a table, a drip bucket, and a chair. I love working outside and with that setup I can move it wherever I want, usually following the sun. I'm sure there's a few of you in the peanut gallery that are saying, why isn't she using an air scribe? I would love to. I don't have one. I'm also not doing this for a museum, just for myself. So. I'm just gonna keep on playing. Wow, almost completely uncovered. I love the bumps on the whirls. This is the first shell that I've uncovered with those spines intact, how cool. At this point, I could take a shot at IDing this guy. How about Calicantharis carlsoni? Well, let's try that Latin again. Calicantharis Carlsoni. Okay, that sounds good. And here's where I got those nuggets of information. Fossil Shells from Western Oregon by Ellen J. Moore. And this is a handy guide if you're trying to identify those shells that you found or uncovered. This would be a fine place to stop if you wanted a cool fossil specimen. It's also where to pump the brakes if you want to keep all the texture and color detail. I'm forging on ahead because I promised a number of folks out there a video about polishing the shell. I mentioned before that some of the shells are very worn down when you open them up. This can actually lead to a beautiful polish because some have a pearlescent layer of shell called nacre. Sometimes when shined up, they can even be chatoyant like tiger's eye. So I'm rushing in with the first of the Nova points, the black or coarsest one. If I was using a Dremel or a bit set from another brand, I would use the green stone or the pink stone here. With some experimenting, you'll figure out exactly what works best for one. Looking good. You can see some of the dark shadows under the light top layer of shell. That could be the flamboyant nacre, but it's a risk. It might also be plain. Let's bring in the brown Nova point. That's stage two in the process. I do a lot of carving on different kinds of stones, from agate to sunstone, opal to obsidian. So investing in a set of Nova points makes sense for me. They are kind of expensive, but they're well worth it. At this stage, if you're using a kit from what came with your tool, I would use a fine sander on this project now. It's well past using a rough uh, sandpaper because you'd just be putting scratches back into the project and we've got a pretty smooth project now. I mentioned I made my own, actually. I didn't have the grit array that I wanted, so I used the disc mandrels that came with the tool and made discs in the grits that I wanted. Just go buy the different grits at the, you know, Ace Hardware or what have you. Easy peasy. I mentioned not putting scratches back in. The shell is very soft, a 2.5 on the Mohs hardness scale. Maybe harder if it's picked up a little bit of silicates along the way, gotten partially agatized. But still, that's really soft as turquoise, opal, and obsidian are all around 5 to 6.5. Of course, a diamond being a perfect 10. Gray Nova Point, stage 3 in pre polish. You might ask about any fossil what is this doing here? 
The location you find your fossil in has a very interesting geologic history to share with you. And the fossils and minerals you find there are great clues and storytellers. In the case of this very shell, it's believed to be from the early to mid middle Miocene era. That's roughly 12 to 24 million years old. Imagine what this gastropod or sea snail must have seen swimming around in the ocean. Ancient whales, sharks, and sea lions, and turtles. Bones from these creatures and more have been found in the same locale. Finally, time for the last Nova point, the pink one. You've probably noticed that for every stage, you need to cover every bit of the surface of the shell to get rid of the texture or aforementioned scratches from the abrasive tool before. After I complete each stage, from burrs to points or sanding discs, I inspect the piece and go back over all the parts that need more work. This seems tedious, but in the end you'll get the pretty polish. Nothing can stop a good lapidary artist. It's because we're hard-headed. Uh. The wet works are done, and the sun has gone down, so I'm at the jewelry bench ready to polish. I'm starting with an 8,000 diamond paste on a wool buffing disc. You'll note that the shell already appears shiny when dry. If your pod project is hazy looking, it still has scratches and you'll want to go back a stage or two with the abrasives. This can be a pain, but it's well worth it in the end when you bring up that wet looking or mirror polish. You can see my array of polishing weapons. The pointy dowels and skewers are homemade and they're great for getting the polishing compounds into tight spaces. Make sure you mark your polishing tools so that you always use the same compound on each one. For instance, you don't want to contaminate your 14,000 diamond polish disc, like I'm using now, with the 8,000 or a bigger mesh or grit, because you'll be putting the scratches back in. Also, always wash your project in between these stages so that your project doesn't infect the next tool with the old polished compound that might be hiding in a nook or cranny. This is a, maybe a, another pain, but the diligence is worth the payoff. About a day's work condensed into 14 minutes. Some projects might only take you an hour or two, depending on how much sandstone or matrix there is around the shell. I find some without any stone around them, and some are even agatized or filled with quartz crystals or zeolite. I'm really happy with the way that this one turned out. You never know what you're going to get, but that's part of the fun. This is the biggest fossil shell I've found. I've been eyeballing it. You think I should open it up? Let me know what you think in the comments. And here's a polished one, great nacre. Look at the different colors. And here's an agate and quartz one. Are you ready to try one? I'll leave a tool list in the comments. Of course, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments as well, and I'll answer them as promptly as I can. I can't wait to get to the next one, since it's like opening up a present from the past, and you get to be the first one in millions of years to see its beauty. Feel free to share this video, like and subscribe, check out ozonefineart.com for more, and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. Cheers and happy creating!